And so you don't see them adopting like the public uh, the public blockchain so much. And then if you talk about like the private blockchains, they're kind of useless, right? Because that's just a database. <laughs> um, and the subnets are kind of in between where you can control like the parameters of your subnet very precisely for different enterprise use cases. Got it. <laughs> Fast forward to 2021. I, uh, I just happened one day to see that Bitcoin hit all time highs. It was like around 50 or 60,000 at the time when I noticed it. And then I went and checked the account where I had bought some Bitcoin and I had that hundred and something dollars or $200 that I had invested was now worth like almost 1500. And I was like, all right, I'm mm. not messing this up again. Like two times already. I got out too early this time. I'm just going to stick to it. And I decided I'm going to learn as much as I can from as many people as I can and go all in. I started off trading. I was shit at trading. I mean, real bad. I was losing money hand over fist. And then mm. I got into yield farming and just kind of exploring different ecosystems. And that worked for me really well. Like I started making, I started doing a lot better than I was at trading. Um, yeah. One of the first people I found was actually you. You were some of the first videos that taught me how to, I remember watching your video on uh, how to, how to make uh, the Avalanche wallet, you know, like the native mm -hmm. one where you were explaining the difference between the P chain, the C chain, the X chain, everything. I learned a yeah. lot from watching your content, man. So I just want to say personally, thank you. You put me on, well, you were one of the people that put me on a really, really positive path for my life. I actually only that's, started that's, making- I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, no. Like I, oh, honestly, I only started making videos because I wanted to stop looking at the charts so much. Like I spent- especially in the first couple of months, all I would do was look at, uh, look at coin market cap or coin gecko. Like every five seconds yeah. I was addicted to it. So instead I said, let me put that energy into something a little bit more positive. All right. So that's my origin yeah. story. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a good story. And you know, it has a happy ending. And I think, um, you know, a couple of learnings I think for people in there as well about, you know, and we'll, we'll, I think we'll get to the topic later about some tips, but, uh, I think, you know, trading is just not for everyone. And sometimes just holding is, is better. Oh <laughs> Though not <God>. always. <laughs> in, in my case, it was substantially better. That's, uh, that mm -hmm. was bad. I remember the first, I don't know, I've seen these memes before where the guy will, he'll sell, the price pumps immediately after he sells, mm -hmm. yeah. and then he'll buy, and the price, that was my life for like three <laughs> weeks. It was so bad. Uh, all right. Yeah, um, no, that's not good for you. No, not at all. But all right, so let me ask my, uh, let me get into my next question. So mm -hmm. I really am curious as to what do you think about subnets? Um, mm -hmm. And if you like, you know, if you like it, why do you think it's bullish for Avalanche? If you don't like it, why do you think it's detrimental to Avalanche? Depending on what your answer is, you know? No, I definitely like it. <laughs> okay. um, I think, I think subnets, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they've always been in the plan. It's not some, something where, you know, people went, okay, what do we do now? Um, and it's always been uh, a good idea. I think, think in terms of execution, we'll have to see how it lands still. For, um, for the uh, people watching who don't know what subnets are, can you explain for them a little bit? Sure. Um, so currently, Avalanche exists out of three chains. I think that's a common misconception because, you know, the amount of times I see on Twitter that Avalanche is just a Ethereum clone gives me a massive headache and if i would have gotten one, Ether one avalanche for like each time i read that i would be much more rich right now um avalanche is currently already three chains it's the c chain the that's the one most people know that's where the DeFi on is the evm uh, chain that stands for contract chain by the way um then there's the x chain uh, which is the one that was first connected to all the exchanges um it's the fastest to send like funds around it's uh, a a dog acrylic graph kind of style ch um, chain i think they'll change that actually um because there's some like limitations and then there's p chain which is the platform uh, chain which is where the staking happens and uh, also the validating and i think the p chain is the one that's most connected to subnets because uh, it's also the one kind of in control of uh, atomic swaps okay the question about subnets will be whether they can do uh, atomic swaps because i think there are still an engineering challenges if i listen a little bit um you know on the like the social media and the conversations happening there 
Um, I, I noticed that for the first subnet, that's kind of semi-life, the WACMI subnet, it's a bit of a test subnet, uh, running like a super enhanced version of the EVM. Um, they're going to use a bridge, I think. And bridges, in my opinion, are not, you know, they're they, they, like fragment and they're not super great UX. Yeah. Uh, I think Atomic Swaps is where like we'll really see uh, subnets being more, yeah, um, how do you say it? How more useful, more adoptable, more interoperable um, than if they do bridges. But we may see bridges first. And the reason I'm very bullish for it is it is what makes Avalanche Avalanche, right? These subnets. It's um, allow. It's like if Ethereum is like a, a chain where you, it runs an EVM and you can run whatever code on top of it, Avalanche is a chain where you can run any EVM on top of it, any uh, virtual machine on top of it. So, yes, you can run the EVM, and the EVM is fine. It also has some limitations. You could run a Solana a subnet, a Bitcoin subnet, you know, all these different code languages, whatever suits your need. For myself, I am most excited about uh, more permission subnets because, I, you know, where I come, when I got in, I always thought, like, well, this would be amazing if institutions can adopt it. But for institutions, there's always, like, limitations about how useful a fully public uh, network and fully public blockchain can be because, you know, they maybe need some more control or maybe, maybe they have privacy issues or whatever. And so you don't see them adopting like the public uh, the public blockchain so much. And then if you talk about like the private blockchains, they're kind of useless, right? Because that's just a database. <laughs> um, and the subnets are kind of in between where you can control like the parameters of your subnet very precisely for different enterprise use cases, um, as well as, you know, for anything that's any other app that exists right now that's currently taking a lot of gas, it can optimize uh, on a on the other subnets. So for example, I had a conversation with Dex a lot uh, on my channel. Sorry guys, that information's currently redacted. If you want alpha like that, join the Morecoin Discord. Don't worry, we got your back. Wait, I'm not sure if this was actually public. Um, <laughs> other example. <laughs> <laughs> other example is like gaming. Gaming takes a lot of transactions, which you know can you know really like clump up a chain. If they use a lot of transactions, they, they require a lot of gas and then you know everything gets more expensive and more slow. So a gaming subnet that's just optimized for like gaming transactions um, that still connects to like the overall uh, ecosystem, you know, that kind of stuff I think is, you know, the next step in scaling blockchains, uh, in my opinion. I mean, I would, I would agree with that. You, what I don't like seeing sometimes is, for instance, on Solana, when NFTs were a huge craze, NFTs just destroyed Solana, you couldn't, you, it made it unusable for periods of time. And especially when that happens on Ethereum, God help you. If you just, if you need to send money from one <laughs> place to another, it's impossible. You'll end up spending $400 to send a hundred dollars somewhere, you know? And, and then it fails. <laughs> yeah, and then it fails and you're like, oh my God. 